Savannah filled her empty life by dating more celebrities, including rock star Slash of Guns N' Roses and MTV host turned actor Polly Shore. According to former adult actress Gina Fine, she tried to bury the troubles of Shannon by assuming the identity of Savannah. By the time Savannah took her life, she hadn't made a movie in months, was training heavily and using Valium. She owed thousands to the IRS. She was getting ready to go to work again to take care of the, the you know, money problems. Then on July 11th of last year, Savannah got into a car accident. She was driving her uh, Corvette, white Corvette that she owned. And in the area she lives, is, uh, there's a lot of curbs. And I think she took one too fast and collided with a, a picket fence. In a distraught emotional state, Savannah called her manager, Nancy Perra. So distressed by her injuries, it seems Savannah couldn't endure her unhappiness anymore. Moments after making that call to her manager, Savannah walked into the garage of her home with a gun. Since its inception, the adult film industry has been mired by stereotypes. Some saying that adult film actresses all have a history of sexual abuse. Some saying that sexually transmitted diseases are rampant in the industry. This is a crazy story, guys. Uh, this is just mind-boggling. So her name is Jenny Lee, also known as Stephanie Sidora. Three or four years ago, I remember seeing her at the AVN Awards. She was there. She looked very nice. And I believe she's won awards. Avian Awards. In the past, she was one of the more popular porn stars of this generation. And all of a sudden, somebody in Las Vegas saw her and recognized her. She looks completely different now. Uh, I know it's hard to believe, but yes, some of these porn stars do have plastic surgery and they do wear a lot of makeup. I know that's hard to believe. But somebody saw her living underneath an overpass in Las Vegas. She's homeless. I mean, this is a really sad story. Kaden Cross is in studio. Kaden, uh, Kaden Cross is a lovely porn star, businesswoman, beautiful lady, and uh, she's here right now. And if my grandmother was here, she would say this. This is the best day of my life. So I play a girl that gets a boob job. What? So. Because um... <laughs> those, those are real, right? Oh, yeah. What? <laughs> You're shattering dreams, but making more come true. <laughs> I, I please everybody. Yeah, let's use that word. God, you're hot. I just want to take you home and introduce you to my mom and just spoon oh, you. Oh, she'd love me. She would. She would. You seeing anyone at the moment? The word pornography is actually derived from the Greek word porne, which means prostitute, and graphene, which means to write. So it's literally defined as any kind of literature, magazine, film, video, writing that depicts the life of prostitutes. Many people, I think, would assume that porn stars and people involved in pornography have had some sort of trauma in their past. Something happened to them to cause them to go into this line of work. Um, that's known as the damaged goods hypothesis. And uh, now we actually have some data, a study that was done into porn stars to look into if this is true. And so this is a study named Pornography Actresses, an Assessment of the Damaged Goods Hypothesis. How do you get a beautiful young lady, uh, well-educated, from a good upbringing, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, get into stripping right away at 18. You know, I it was just, uh, it was the timing thing. I had just turned 18, and I, there just. was this, this pony that I wanted to get. <laughs> and so the, the cheapest, or not cheapest, but the easiest way for me to afford a pony in a short amount of time was to go get naked. You're cute, and if you ever want to do any nude work, call this number. And I remember being very gracious and th said thank you, but... Of course, I was thinking that will ruin my career, so I couldn't do that. Well, about a month after that, I was really starving. So I didn't know that. I was only 18, and you know, I hadn't eaten for two days. I don't know if you know what that feels like to be homeless and not have food, but it sucks. 
And a, a pimp came up to me and lured me into the sex industry, and I swore I would never do prostitution. But a voice came to me and says, well, your parents don't care. God doesn't care. I go, yeah, why should I care? I don't think low self-esteem discriminates against anyone. It doesn't matter if you come from a great family or if you come from a not so great background. Uh, I struggled my entire childhood with weight and I never felt attractive or worthy of male attention. Because earlier that day, this old man was on top of me and he was sweating all over me and his sweat would drip into my eyes. And that's what my life became about. I no longer had friends. I didn't have my family. Money is what I'd have in one hand and a bottle of alcohol in the other. When I go out, I feel as if I'm wearing slut across my forehead a lot of issues with uh, my transition and people not accepting me into the mainstream world. So I have really gotten to the point where there are days to weeks at a time where I don't leave my house. And my siblings and my dad were all okay with it and they just said don't become a cliche don't you know don't get hooked on drugs uh, don't let people force you to do anything you don't want to do symptomatic yeah and we'll support you and we'll be here for you and of course my mom took it the hardest and asked me to quit and come home um, and it definitely made our relationship strained I don't have any, so there's, I have no history of sexual abuse, like I said, a great family and they're still supportive of me, so. And at the end of the day, are you happy with your career? I am very happy. I think it has actually shaped who I've become as a person. Um, I don't think that being in any other industry could have helped me become who I am. Well, that's all your real name? It's not. Damn. Damn. No, you guys, you're always was, fooling us. I know. Do you? I think we lie a lot.
Do you lie? Have you lied? Have you lied at all tonight? Today? Have I? Has there been a lie? Like if there was a lie detector test? No, I'm saying like we lie in action. You know, like yeah. you're in the middle of a scene and maybe you're not quite there, but then the director's like, "Come now," and you pretend like you just. Oh, came. you fake come. He threw me against the wall and choked me and smacked me until my face was bruised. And he like choked me out and made me faint so much that one of my blood vessels popped. And I consented to all of this, by the way. Like I'm a really big pain enthusiast. Like I love pain. So girls, like maybe there'll be two 18 year old girls and maybe about 10, 30 to 40 year old men who are intimid intimidating. These girls go on the set and they're like, um, I didn't say I would do that. They're like, oh, you're doing it. Because if you don't, we're gonna sue you, um, we're gonna physically hurt you, or we're gonna send your porn to your parents and your family. This is what it is every single day in the porn industry. Even the contract girls will tell you how much they love. We're all forced to say things. We're all groomed and trained by veteran porn stars, by doctors, unlicensed, unlicensed, Doctor, she that doctor doesn't have a medical degree. I want to talk about porn star deaths. Since 2007, 119 porn stars have died prematurely, and that's just the ones we know of. Seven died from AIDS, 24 died from drugs, 19 died from suicide, 17 were murdered, six were accidental, which most likely is alcohol or drug related. 39 died prematurely from medical conditions, seven died from causes unknown. Over 125 porn stars have died from AIDS since 1988. Let's look at the average lifespan for porn stars. When the deaths of 129 porn performers over a period of roughly 20 years were analyzed, it was discovered that there was an unusually large number of premature death from causes such as drugs, suicide, murder, alcohol abuse, accidental death, and disease. It was also discovered that the average life expectancy of a porn performer is only 37 43 years old, whereas the average life expectancy of an American like you and me is 78.1 years old. They're dying at almost half our age. Violence, sex trafficking, drugs and alcohol. Oh yeah, we snorted meth on this set. Of course, nobody does porn sober. It's ridiculous. We're all getting high. We have to. In fact, there are two doctors in the San Fernando Valley that are in conspiracy with the multi-billion dollar porn industry. And when those girls can't get through their hardcore scenes, they go get Vicodin, Prozac, Norcos, Xanax. So they get street drugs and they get prescription drugs. And that's why so many of them die so young. No other industry has more suicide rates or high death rates from drugs, homicide, AIDS than the porn industry. So that we can kind of clear up some of the things. Uh, do you have a drug addiction? No. Uh, are you homeless? No. Are you poor? No. Uh, would you describe yourself as desperate or being a, a victim of some sort of sexual abuse? Absolutely not. So we, um, and would you describe the, your fellow um, women in this industry as being any of those things? I mean, uh, clearly you interact with them. Uh, what type of feeling have you gotten from them? Do they come from desperate backgrounds? No, and like I said, there's all different facets of the industry and there, I'm not gonna say that there aren't women that fall into that stereotype, because there are, and it's just a reality of our industry, but the successful ones are, not, are nothing like that. And if they are, they will, will not be successful in our industry, and they will not have a career in our industry in this day and age.
Yeah, if you're holding it together, you can be a little crazy. Yeah, yeah, but if you're just stupid crazy, stupid crazy is not okay. Stupid crazy gets you homeless on the streets. Yeah. Smart crazy. Smart crazy is admirable. Yeah. That's just kind of like, wow, they're really out there. They're like the next level beyond, beyond us.